I'm going to go ahead. Overflow crowd. I love it. I love it. Let's give everybody a round of applause. <laughs> Welcome to our monthly community coalition meeting. Uh, my name is Tracy Parsons. I'm the facilitator of this meeting each month. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. This is our special meeting. Um, a couple of months ago, we had some students here from an Operation Hope program, Unit 4 schools. I know, come on, you guys do look, Operation Hope, come on, come on. All right. So it really put the idea on us and also the Youth for Christ youth. Let's get Youth for Christ youth. Come on, let's give them. All right, we got, we got to raise the energy in here. It's too, you know, I, I, you know, it's too cool and chilled out. I should have had a DJ here, right, getting us in the right mood before, before the meeting, right? Let's give a round of applause for everyone. All right, so we, I already know we have a bunch of new, but how many first-time coalition folks are here? Just raise your hand for me. Yeah, all right, welcome, welcome. So, Kellen, you want to get me on the screen here? So, um, a number of uh, folks mentioned they were here from the club and representing Dr. P. Uh, this has been a really, really tough week for many of us uh, in our community. Um, yeah, really, really, really just um, tragic situation. You talk about um, a, a, a gentleman that is from Urbana, um, spent his life working for and with youth, not only in our community, but across the country. And uh, he will be sorely missed. And um, so what I'd really like to do is just do um, a moment of silence, silence for my good friend, Dr. Uh, William Patterson. All right, thank you, thank you so much. Um, as we know, his homegoing uh, memorial will be this Sunday. If you hadn't seen this information at Cranert, uh, 3 to 7 p.m. And I know the family wants this to be welcoming and open to anyone who wants to go and celebrate Dr. P. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Give him a round of applause, too, after Mom's silence, right? I could hear him saying, you know it, you know it, right? Okay, so um, my students that are in the first group, if you would come forward, please. Let's give them a round of applause as they come forward. Okay, I know there's a couple of more coming. And how about if we go up on the stage first? Coming up, yeah. Denise, do one of your students want to go with the first group and want to come with the second? Or do they want to wait to the second group? All right, let's give our students a round of applause. All right. Welcome, London. Welcome. All right. So um, we all know the importance of youth voice. Um, far too often, we as organizations and groups that work with young folks are um, making decisions from our perspective, right? And um, I think we are at the really critical point 
of trying to learn how we connect with our students better. And so what better uh, way of um, hearing, than, what better way of learning about our youth than from our youth, right? And so um, we wanna just ask them to share their perspective and their thoughts about uh, what's happening for them, with them, and in our community. We're hoping to um, capture what they share with us. We will be getting it out from the coalition back to all of you and your organizations. So as you're planning programming, planning for the summer, you're, you're using what our young our students have, have shared with us. So um, we've got two panels. The first panel is going to talk about programs and services and things like that. And then the second panel will talk about individual needs, right? So, so that's how it's going to go. Do we have mics here? How, how many mics do we have? Just one? So we've got, who's got the other mic? Eric, you want to bring it up? So the, we'll ask a few questions. Um, are, you, are students in the audience? At the end, if you've got some things you want to add about that, what we've talked about, and um, maybe there will be time for an adult question or two, but I really want this to be youth focus and youth voice, okay? So, um, kind of the first question, and if you could just say your name again before you answer so we know um, who you are. And uh, it's okay to be nervous. I'm nervous too, and I'm excited, right? So, um, talk to us and share a little bit about, so I wanna know about programs or activities that you know of or you're a part of that works really well, that you like, tell us about something that you're doing, whether it's at school or after school. Um, and you've got the mic, so you're gonna start it? Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Amaya Somerville. Um, one of the programs that I'm in is the Don Moyer Boys and Girls Club. And they do a lot of stuff like, um, like we do um, Power Hour and like that like gives us time to like do our homework and like get help on subjects that we need help on and we also um go on like a lot of trips to see like um careers that we want to pursue in the future and then one that I do at school is my um my jazz band and so like I lead vocals for it and like it's really fun because we get to go to like different like schools and see like what school we would want to go to and like the band programs that they have at those schools and like see how like they operate and see if like we would want to go there for that school. So I love that. So keep the mic. You mentioned you play in the jazz band. What instrument do you play? Um, in jazz band, I do vocals and then in concert band, I play the flute. Wonderful. How did you get started playing music? Um, well, my family is very musically inclined. Okay. And so I grew up around music a lot and so that's like one of the reasons that I got into music. And then like, I listen to like a lot of artists who like make music. Like, yeah, I listen to a lot of artists. And so like, I wanted to get into like music making myself. And so like, I sometimes make songs of my own. And then like for band, we like go to like different colleges, like I said a few minutes ago. And then we also, um, we also like play a lot of music and we have a performance coming up on May 4th where we're gonna like have like a day in the park at Hessel Park and like we're just gonna like play like for like a concert there. I love it. Thank you. Let's give her a round of applause. You wanna pass your mic? <laughs> so AD, you wanna talk with us and share about a program or anything that you're involved in that you like and you think is good? You for Christ, I go there. Um, Friday nights is the best time for me for midnight. I mean, it helps keep us out of the streets and participate and look forward to something on Friday nights to go to after school. 
of it. So, t- are you are you you really like basketball? You really like basketball? Yes. Or you just like being at mid I like basketball. Okay. All right. Anything at school that you really like or you're involved in? The program that we have for football. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Stand up and share your name with us. My name is Natalia. All right, Natalia. So t- tell us about a program that you really like or what you're involved in. Um, I like going to the Dom Moy Boys and Girls Club. Okay. Um, like over spring break, Miss Monica took us to like different culture food places. So like we had like African food and we experienced different foods. Uh, so was that the first time you had African food? Yeah. All right. Anything at school you're involved in that you like that you want to share with us? No, I like playing basketball. Okay. Are you on any of the teams at school? Um, no, I'm on an AAU team. Oh, wonderful. Okay. What position do you play? Point guard. The point guard. All right. Let's give her a round of applause, please. All right, Carmine. I'm Carmine. Um, a program that I, outside of Central, that I um, have really grown to like is um, the youth group at the Vineyard Church. Um, we When we hear church, we sometimes get scared, like, you know, um, but I love um, the vineyard because it doesn't feel, um, sometimes it can be over, um, a lot of places or churches, a lot of people feel it's overbearing or um, super spiritual. I don't get that when I'm at, like, the youth group. Um, it's basically just a time for people like your age. Um, you'll be put in a group of, like, let's say if you're a senior or sophomore, you'll be put in one group, and then you guys kind of go over your um, things that happen during your week, um, whether good or bad, and you guys kind of um, build a sisterhood or a brotherhood. Um, and I really um, have seen change just in myself, just having people that aren't like your mom or your dad or your brother or sister be able to talk to those different people and those different um, races and just being able to see people that also um, experience things that you experience and um, see things that you be you experience. And you'll be surprised how many people actually um, go through a lot of the things that we go through. Um, and then at Central, I really love the Operation Hope, which is who I'm here with today. Um, we like going college visits and like um, Mr. Turner just keeps us on our toes and make sure we're doing what we need to do um, to be our most successful. Um, and I find um, that as a really big help because a lot of times we don't always have that push or we don't always have that motivation. Um, so to get that again, outside of being like blood family related, it's amazing to have, to be able to get that. Um, and I love music, I love to do music. So anytime it's like little programs happening, I know um, most recently it was the ISYM camp at the University of Illinois. We like stayed in dorms and like, um, got to know each other and made music and collab and do all of that. So I love to find anything that happens, um, anything musically related. Um, I love to write um, and things of that nature. So thank you. So, so wait, 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 wait now. So you started off and you said something I, I thought was interesting. I'd like you to talk a little bit more, right? You talked about going to church. Yeah. And you offered something, you said it wasn't church-like. That's what. What does that mean to you when you say that? So, I'm not. I don't. I'm not gonna say um, it wasn't church like. Um, I'm gonna say it wasn't the stereotypical. Um, if you do this, if you say that, you know what I'm saying. You're done. You're going. You know what I'm saying. It wasn't. It, it wasn't that. Um, it was more about. Um, your, it was more it was more like your relationship it wasn't as it wasn't black and white black and white paper rules is what i mean it felt more like we are we actually have some unity going on um it wasn't just about you know it wasn't a, a bunch of rules and that's what i meant by that over you know what i'm saying over yes, sir. church yes sir thank so. you i just wanted you to share that yeah thank yes, you thank you let's give thank him a round you. of applause please thank you So London, you, you feel good? You want to share something with us about that you're involved with? You want to stand up if you feel, if you feel if you feel like it. I'm London, and I do a tutoring program after school. Use your mic for us, London, please. I do a tutor program after school. 
Yes. So tell us what you what you like about the tutoring program. Um, we don't just do homework and stuff. We do like games. We have like fun after stuff, and then after that we start to do our homework. Yeah, nice. So the games and stuff is just kind of fun stuff to make the school work okay. Is that what you're sharing with us? Yes. Okay, nice. Let's give London a round of applause. Okay, now tell us your name because I did not get your name. And Hi, my name is Sanaya. All right, Sanaya, welcome. So share with us a program tonight that you are in, that you like, that you want to tell us about, and tell us why you like it. Um. Well, at the center, I go to Fab Lab, and it's a place where we can go to be creative and, like, let let our creative juices flow. It's really nice to see what other people can think of and what they can do in so little time because we only have a short amount of time to make something after we get out of school and we, we go do something, and it's actually really fun. Tell us about something that you made that you really like, that you were proud of. Um, a hat. <laughs> a hat, huh? <laughs> so that mean you knitted a hat or? We like, we embroidered that. You embroidered a hat. All right, all right. Great job, let's give her a round of applause, please. I'm Isaiah, I'm with You For Christ. Tell us about something that you like at Youth for Christ or something at school that you enjoy. At school, we do lunch crew. So at lunch, we uh, on Tuesdays, we go to a classroom and we talk and he, we, he gives us food. And we, we play with like drones and RC cars and we do other stuff like. And on Friday, we play basketball and midnight basketball. Uh, you, you, got, you got a little hoop game? Yeah. <laughs> so you know rev is always telling us about this lunch crew we've been you know what's what's happening at lunch crew that makes it happening we get to like do activities and he gives us food like chicken <laughs> so are the people in lunch crew people that you know throughout the school or you've met new people at lunch crew how does that work it's just the people that go to our school. Did you know a lot of them before getting in lunch crew? Yeah. Okay. If y'all see each other during the day, do y'all say what's up? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let's give this round of applause. So Isaiah, why don't you stay up and lead us off on the second question. So if you were in charge of planning an event, for your age group in the community that you think would be good or something you haven't heard about or something we should think about doing? Does anything come to mind that you think as a community we should hear about or be thinking about or try to put in place for students? Uh, we could like go places like different colleges to see what they have in store. So when we get older, we we have a plan for us to something to do. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Okay, so pass the mic, please. Same question. If you could think of something that you think we should be doing as a community or creating or we should build or we should have for students, what comes to mind for you? Um, well, at the center, when we, we are there, I see like, like a lots of sorority groups mm -hmm. and maybe like, well, we have a program where we get to be in the sorority for a day. Mm -hmm. That, because right now, that kind of sounds really fun just to see like what, what they have. And it, even like if we wanted to do it when we got older, I think just seeing what they have to show us the different opportunities would be nice. Had you heard about sororities or anything before going to the center? No. Okay, all right. Thank you for that. Let's give a round of applause, please. So if you could think of something you think we need as a community or you'd like to see or you think would be fun or there's not enough of, anything come to mind? Uh, not really, but 
I think we can build some stuff for kids to do after school so they won't be like at home being bored. I'm, I'm sorry, Len, if you say it one more time and use the mic, please. I think we should build stuff for our kids that do after school so okay. they won't just be like at home and at, doing nothing, I guess. After school programs and stuff? Okay. Give her a round of applause, please. Um, maybe this is um, aimed towards more smaller um, children, but I know when I was uh, growing up in school, I really liked when um, schools at the, um, usually was um, at the end of the school year, they used to throw like these big um, events where, you know, they would be on like, they have the, um, uh, the, the slides and um, just those big, um, those big events, it's like the end of the school year event. Um, I really think that those would, um, and as, of course, like tie something academically to those, I feel like it would be really good because um, smaller kids, they really see, it's really, it's you have to tie like academic stuff into like having fun with them. And I really feel like that would be a good thing for them. Um, I want to tie to, um, forget your name, I'm sorry. I forgot what, um, Sanaya, Sanaya. Um, it's like sorority, things like that. I think it's amazing when younger children do like, um, or are put in like, like older, older, older um, people's um, like schooling. For example, like when I went to the the um, University of Illinois and did the camp for dorms, uh, we stayed in dorms and stuff. It's like when they get that they get that experience, that old that, that feel like they're getting that old experience, but also being around people their age. Um, I feel like things like that is um, amazing. Uh, we should put in. Um, and the last thing I would say, I will, I like, I will, I will want the youth to have stuff like this, um, like a coalition meeting where we all can, like, aim towards youth. Like this room is full of like youth, um, and just throwing different suggestions out there about what what they feel and stuff. Um, I feel like it should be like a meeting. That's what I think. Thank you. Let's give him his round of applause. Thank you. Um, I think we should have more pickleball teams. Pickleball, right? Okay, all right. Yeah. So, do you you play pickleball at the club, or you play it at school? No, I play it at school in the gym during PE. Okay, all right. I like that. All right. Midnight flag football. Ah, uh, okay. Midnight flag football on campus yeah. in one of those facilities, Bob. You know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that we should have like more like dances or like more like get togethers to have like just have a night where like we don't have to like worry about like any homework or like any stuff like that and like we can just have a night where like we get to hang out and like just have like fun and then like if like it could be an overnight thing too where like we have like a party and then like we go to sleep and then like party again in the morning. <laughs> so I feel I feel like that would be fun and um and I just I just think that like um it would be like a better connecting experience for like the kids who like don't talk to people a lot or like kids who like just have their own friend groups and don't talk to a lot of other people because it could be like an experience where like they could um, talk to other people and like find people that they like haven't talked to before but actually have like a lot of stuff in common with. All right, so let me, let me, let me ask, a, so does it need to be like in a hotel like this or should it be on campus or could we do it at school? What? Not at school. Not at school. Not at school. Right. No. <laughs> Not at school. All right, let's give her a round of applause. Okay, so um, this, this may be a little bit tougher because I want you to be honest with us, right? So what's the biggest barrier as a student that you see happening in our community? What stops you from having fun? What stops you from going to sporting events? Or what is happening in the community? Is it these things that we have now are boring? Is it transportation? Is it age appropriate stuff? Is it nervousness? You just talked a little bit about people who are shy and don't talk as much to folks. Your friends aren't attending. 
And is it safety? So you want to start us off, or we're going to have AD start? Let's let AD start us off there. Uh, don't nothing stop me for real. Okay. I mean, don't nothing really stop me. I just say, I just got to let my mom know ahead of time. All right. <laughs> That's that's important, but do you hear do, do you hear folks say, man, I don't want to do that or I don't want to go there or? Yeah, when it comes to safety issues, that's me sometimes. Okay, so when, tell us a little bit more about. So what are what are you thinking about? What are you, you know? Uh, when it comes down to like staying out at midnight and stuff, not when out when we at Friday night, staying out. That's I don't. Okay. That, that got safety issues because where I live, it's a lot of gun violence. Okay. Is there anything that you don't go to or, you know, mom or family doesn't want you to go to or anything come to mind that you would share with us that we should be thinking about? Um, if I ask my mom to go somewhere and my grades are good, I can go. Um, Yeah. Okay, okay. Carmine, anything come to mind you want to share? Um, yeah, of Carmine. course, with um, the gun violence thing. Um, that's something to always think about. But honestly, everything that you mentioned, it's a little bit of that for every, it's a little bit of all of that. Um, but I like also what he said. He said, ain't nothing stop me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> nothing stop him. Um, I feel like everything has a risk with it. So um, simply coming here has a risk. Everybody, Everything has a risk. So I do think it's a little bit of all of those things. But I do um, know the gun violence is definitely um, one that is very, like, because it could be, because we could have no problem with anybody whatsoever. We could not be in any of that whatsoever. But um, in those kind of cases, you can simply just be at the wrong place at the wrong time. So that's why that one out of all of those, I would say definitely makes me weary. Like, I'm not going to go here. I'm not going to go here. You know, um, places that was a normal, normalized um, going, it's like now you got to be scared, you know. Um, and then me getting older, I do want if I'm if, if I'm on, um, it's a prom night and it's like a party after you know I want to be able to be comfortable and confident and say I'm gonna have fun or whatever so it sucks that now you're having a good night you gotta think like think twice like you know maybe I should just go home maybe I should just go out to eat you know and that's I feel like that is um, something that does suck so so let me stay there so how much do students talk about this issue of safety? or what it might really be like, or do our kids in the hallway talking about it in the lunchroom? Is it, how, how are kids talking about safety and how that fits in? Um, so far what I've seen, um, and this is a horrible thing, but a lot of, um, even at my school, a lot of um, students my age or even younger, they partake into the whole gun violence thing. They have guns, they own guns. So unfortunately for me, I hear more of like, um, I hear more of the praise of that. It's, it's in my school, from what I've seen a lot of times, um, it's like, if you don't, if you're not like, if you don't have a gun, if you're not like that, that's then you're kind of like, that's kind of not normal. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it should be the other way around. So that, that does suck, but we don't, they don't talk about it as much and it's like we shouldn't do this and da, 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 da. I don't hear as much as that you know um and I feel like it doesn't hit a lot of people that hard until it's like somebody that they love or some you know what I'm saying um but we have to be mindful of, and that's why I'm glad I'm mindful even though it, whether it happens to me or not um or somebody in my family it's like I'm mindful that that's just something that we all shouldn't get our hands in you know um, and I feel, and a lot of young people at my school, they like to justify, well, he said this, well, he did this. They came at my family. Well, they shot at my family, so I'm put in a position where I have to do this, I have to do that. No, you know. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, that's what, I, that's what I have to hear. Okay, thank you. London, anything that comes to mind? Yeah, thank you. Give him a round of applause. So... Yeah, if you want me to repeat it, just anything that comes to mind that, you know, why you don't do stuff or, you know, transportation, getting there, safety, 
You know, there's not stuff that you feel interested in, not enough? My mom. She stops me from going to a lot of places. Okay. Because I can't go there on my brother or, like, my dad or something. So okay. I can't really go to a lot of places by myself. Yeah. Thinking safety, right? Yeah. Okay, give her a round of applause. I would say the same thing with safety issues because if you want to go hang out with your friends and go to the park after school, it's like you got to make sure there's not people watching you because people are creepy and scary. And I know because my mom tells me all the time to make sure you have your phone on you and watch out for your surroundings because and always know your way back home because you never know what can happen it, anything can happen at any moment and so that's the only reason why I don't go to a lot of things unless I'm with a parent or with a family friend all right give her a round of applause uh my mom she she don't really let me be going a lot of places because of like safety issues like she worried about like what would happen um she she probably only let me go to certain places unless she's with me and but i don't really be wanting to go a lot of places unless my friends are there because it's kind of boring there's nothing to really do here All right. in my opinion yeah Can anything come to mind that wouldn't be boring to do not really, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> Ms. Somerville, you have anything you want to ask? Give Isaiah his round of applause. Any, anything come to mind that you want to share with us? Um, I would probably say transportation issues and safety issues, like a lot of people have been saying, because like in my school, like it doesn't matter where we are. We were just at the engineering open house on Friday and like there's always just one girl who's always trying to start a fight with everybody. And so we were there at the engineering open house and like she was trying to start a fight with some Urbana kids who didn't even do anything to her. And I feel like there's always just somebody like trying to pick on somebody or trying to fight somebody for like no reason because they feel like they obligated to do it because they ain't got nothing to do. Like if you don't got nothing to do, like go watch a movie, like go play a game, like talk to your friends instead of trying to always pick fights with somebody because that's that's why a lot of kids at my school don't talk to a lot of other people or like only have one small friend group because a lot of people feel like they're not welcome because somebody's always talking about somebody or somebody's always trying to start f fights with somebody or like it, there's like always a rumor about somebody for like no reason like they can find other things to do besides start rumors and fight people and just be like a mean person like overall like that's why a lot of people in my school don't have that many friends because they don't want to talk to a lot of people because they feel like they're gonna get beat up or they're gonna get talked about and I feel like it shouldn't be that way because when we were in elementary school we made so many friends but in middle school and high school now we don't make as many friends because somebody's always getting talked about or somebody's always trying to pick a fight with somebody right yeah So are there any of the students that in the audience that have something that they really want to add? All right, so Don Moore Boys and Girls Club, Abandoned Neighborhood Connections, Operation Hope, Youth for Christ, Midnight Basketball, and my Abandoned Neighborhood Connections, did I say it already? Am I missing any of the groups from our representation here? All right, let's give our first group of students a big round of applause. Thank you all. All right, my second group, come on up, please. All right, do we have anyone else who's in the audience of our students that Want to come up? There we go. There we go. Okay. So before you, um, Tam, can can we grab his mic? Maggie 
Wave, wave your hands, Maggie. So Maggie's here. She's an intern. And, and take the mic to her, please. So she's uh, here from public health. And she's working with JR as his intern. So she's capturing the data for us. So there's a QR code thing. She said she didn't want to talk, but this is what I do is to people in public, just give it to you. So explain the QR code and where it's at and then what you're doing that folks can contribute to. So there's a pamphlet over on the table just giving some ideas that already exist within the community for high schoolers to do and then ways to make your own fun that you don't have to spend money, um, what was being asked at the February meeting, and then there's a QR code to give your own feedback on what you want to see in the community and um, maybe financial restrictions to that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. So, Eric, if you want to grab uh, the pamphlets and then just start rotating them through and then folks can grab a pamphlet, get the QR code, and then pass the pamphlet on. So they're uh, on the back table. Maggie, make sure he gets the right pamphlets to pass out, please. All right, so we've got our second group of students. Uh, let's give them a round of applause, please. All right, fellas, we're going we're gonna to get it going here. So this group is going to be really talking about kind of personal stuff, right? What they see as personally what's needed and kind of support uh, might be needed most. So uh, say your name, please, when you uh, respond so we make sure we get your name right. Um, as a person growing up now, what do, what do you feel you need personally for support or uh, a push, encouragement, uh, things you're getting or not getting. First thoughts when I say personally, what do you feel like you need for success? Um, my name is Jonathan Tussford. Um, first thing I would say is um, opportunities to um, put things on resumes or applications for different colleges or any jobs I would like to do. Um, um, so far, I've gotten some opportunities with the Don Moy Boys and Girls Club, and I would love to get some more so that I can build my own skills, and I can use that to further um, build my reputation as I move forward in learning. Applause. Okay. So the question is, what do you personally feel like you need for success or helping to navigate life or just in general kind of like? What you need, you feel like you need? Uh, I feel like it'll be leadership, like just having somebody older, like there for you to maneuver and like help you out and guide you, like what you want to do with your life and like show you what's wrong or what's right. Is that is that a mentoring program? Is that yeah. just naturally just finding somebody to meet? Yeah, or? like mentoring kind of. Okay. okay. My name DJ Pari, like uh, a little push, like to show you the right way, show you the correct path, how to do things right. And like, like he said, like more opportunities to show you how to do more things than what you're interested in. Do you feel like you get pushed and supported in school? Yeah, with Red, he took, like he put me in a, he took me to the U of I camp. I was there for like a week and I was in a dorm and stuff. And okay. then I went to DC to go look at black colleges and stuff. All right, so you're getting that through Rev and his program through you. And I also got a mentor who, like, teach me how to do stuff. And Is your mentor through school? Yeah. Okay. All right. He's he going to come back. Uh, yeah, i definitely say with Sheldon Turner with the Operation of Hope, he shows me a lot with, like, college visits to, like, help me get to the next step in life. So what do you feel you personally might need for success or help or support or encouragement? Or Well, me personally, uh, it took a village to raise me. You know, I didn't really have no posture around. So I had uncles, I had mentors, and I feel like yeah, that did a lot to me yeah. in a positive way, though. And uh, I felt every black man that's intelligent should have another you know, smarter black man around them, right? if it's a father or a father figure. Uh, yeah. So stay, stay up, stay up, stay up. All right. So 
Yeah, and keep your mic up. So when you say you, you, every black man should have a black man in his life, what does that look like to you? Is that through school? Is that more mentoring program? I know, you, I know you're part of Operation Hope, but how, as, what, what would you like to see from black men in the community? I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, we have a lot of older adults in the country. I mean, not congregation. <laughs> in the, uh, in Champaign and Urbana. So I feel like uh, they should take more action and do more. And, uh, yeah, I feel the seniors and the juniors, they should really try to push the sophomores, you know, and, and the freshmen to do good, do better than them. And uh, they should learn from their mistakes, you know. Okay. Give me a round of applause, first group. Okay, first first row. First row, yeah. Stand up, please. Your name? Uh, I'm Elijah. Uh, I'm here with Dream as well. Um, I say for me, uh, right now I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. But when I first started, like college was um, the college process. I just needed direction. Uh, I was kind of lost. I didn't really know where to start, what to do. Um, but like I, I'm in a program uh, called Trio. They Trio Upward Bound. That kind of helped me out uh, at first. Um, they provide like academic support, uh, tutoring, and like they just give you general direction. And then also like the best program at Parkland, it was a summer program where we explored a bunch of careers and talked to professors and stuff. And we also got college credit. So that I feel like those two things really started me off um, well. And also I'd say like a push to do things. Um, like I'm kind of shy, I don't really go out a lot. <laughs> I don't do a lot. I had to get pushed to come here. So I feel like, uh, like a, a good push in the right direction to do more things, I think that's needed as well. So thanks, thanks for coming, getting, well, stay up, stay up for me. So thanks for, you know, pushing yourself a little bit to get up and then come up front. Much respect for that, right? How did you first get in Dream? How, did you, through school or did someone tell you about Dream? How did you get in that program? Well, actually, my sister was part of Dream first. Uh, I didn't really know. And then my mom was like, you should go to Dream too. And I was like, and then at first I was like, nah, I'm fine. And then my sister was like, you should go to Dream too. And I was like, okay, I'll go. And then <laughs> Mr. Tracy back there, part of Dream, he got me, he kept me there. So, yeah. Give him a round of applause, please. My name is EJ, and I'm here with Dream also. And I just like need more people to teach me how to stay financially stable. So let's, let's, I love that, right? Like Sh Mr. Sheldon always say, students like that bread, right? They want that bread, they need that bread. So what do you say? Oh, it's bag now? Okay, I, I gotta keep up, right? I gotta keep up, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Bread, bread was a couple of years ago, right? Okay, okay. So when you say you need help with financial, help with, is that, about money, how to, tell, tell me what you mean when you say that, please. Just how to save money and just don't spend it on useless things. Okay, okay. Do we need more job training programs? Do we need things, is these, are you talking about through school or are you talking about after school? When, through school. Through school, okay. All right, let's give him his round of applause. All right, I'm John Smith. I'm part of the Dream Program, and uh, I'm a junior now, so I've been in school for a little bit, but uh, <laughs> not, I'm still gonna be in it for a little bit, but otherwise, uh, I would say when I was like younger, I needed to push, needed to go around, try to find some things, and uh, I would say through Dream and different programs I've been through, they kind of made me figure out certain things that I'm good at and certain things that I like. Otherwise, uh, I've always kind of been iffy here and there. I've just been like, not in a bad mental place, but I've just been trying to go through life just steadily. But now I kind of got that spark and now I'm trying to figure out where I need to go, where I need to do this and that. Otherwise, like my times, I got less and less time. I barely even got here without the Uber that Mr. Tracy got me. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be here right now. I'd be uh, talking with my grandma down at the, uh, shoot, I, I don't forgot. But anyway, let's pass that. that. That's really all I'm going to talk about. So, John, uh, a number of you have talked about pushing uh -huh. and encouraging, mm -hmm. right? I know we struggle 
with young brothers on how to be supportive, how to connect. So when you say push, what does that look like? Or how do we, how would you suggest as adults, we think about and look at this idea of encouraging, pushing, supporting, all of those things. What would, what would you say? Okay, so I would say it's not like an aggressive push. You just do it over time. You can't really force someone to do something and you can't really convince them too much. You just always show it as an option. And once they figure out that this is a good option, then they can you can show them the steps of where they need to go or like uh, where they need to be. Otherwise, if they can't find transportation there, you can give them transportation or you can find a way to give them transportation. Like this whole year, I had to get a bus pass in order to get to where I needed to go. So uh, since I don't like finding Ubers and my parents don't like me riding with random people. All right, thank you. Give John his round of applause. Okay, so we're gonna start off and talk about school. And uh, we've gotta learn about, we have to learn about the importance of doing well in school and grades and academic success. It's important, it's critical. And uh, how do we do this better? How do we get, you know, we got a panel of young black men here and we're struggling as a community, as a society on how to reach you. How do we do this better? Tell us. I, I want all of you to tell us how we do this better. All right, so uh, all the way through high school, I always kept a job, you know, yeah. That kind of showed me responsibility, something with being a man was, you know. and. Uh, School was always first, everything else was secondary. And uh, I like playing the game a lot, but put that to the side. After that, I just got to work in school. So I mean, it was slight, so it was slight. Anything else you wanna add? It's okay. important. Though. So in, in the classroom, in the classroom, and so stand up, right? So we're talking about academic success. We're talking about school and connection. How is school more relative for you, right? Like, uh, well, I need to have a good GPA because I want to play football. So uh, that gave me that gave me a mindset like to push forward and keep doing what I need to do to be the best person I can be. And something that so athletics and sports is what's connected for you with school and everything, right? Yeah. I love that. Uh, Stay on that path, brother, right? Yeah. Chief can tell you he played football in college. I played football in college. And the reason we could play is because we had grades, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what's up. Uh, yeah, piggybacking off of what DJ said about the GPA thing, I feel like as a student athlete running track and field, I need to have like a good GPA and stand on top of my grades in order to participate in my sport. And I also want to go to college after high school and attend somewhere that's like D1 or D2. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, but, but how do, you know, so you guys have some different kind of self-motivation because you've connected with sports, right? Everybody can't play sports, right? Yeah. Everybody can't uh, 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 sing or perform that, right? So, you know, what, what do you see that's missing in school you guys are lucky, right? You've got something yeah. you connected with, but if you didn't have that, or if you've got friends who are not athletes and they're kind of just trying to figure it out, what do you, is there anything you see? Uh, more programs for the school. That's just gonna help out like with the youth, like help them get them grades up. So I feel like certain like groups that like in our, in our, in our school, it don't really help out. Mm -hmm. Or just like a tutoring center, it don't really help out with students. Okay. okay. Let's give him his round of applause, please. Um, as a freshman in Centennial and just joining, um, I'm kind of more focused on my grades to get a scholarship into either um, Parkland or into U of I, mainly U of I because of the different things that they have as options. So I'm, uh, I'm really more of my grades kind of guy because I came from a place where um, there wasn't much options and um, my grades were poor then, so I'm trying to fix how I do my things and how I focus on what I do so that I can get a better chance. So when you say you came from, where did you come from that's helping connect you now? 
Um, I came from the Caribbean. Okay. So um, we didn't have. We only had like one college on the island in terms of a general college, and um, I did know that I would eventually need a scholarship, but I wasn't really prioritizing that mainly because um, everyone didn't really focus on academics really, mm. and I was more of a troubled child in terms of um, just chilling out and doing whatever. So I kind of enjoying school here as in terms of the different privileges like the free lunch um people actually coming to me and talk to me and asking questions so wonderful thank you okay first first row first row oh, can you repeat the question again please i'm sorry oh so, uh connecting with school academics how do we help make that more important for students, or how do we connect with students so that this idea of the importance of academics is better understood and folks connect with it better? Um, for me, I'm also an athlete, so that, that was the main motivator for me. Um, but I feel like a lot of other students, they, they think education isn't for me, so they don't put their effort into it. They're like, let me focus on sports only. Because that's what's going to make me successful. But I feel like a lot of people don't realize how far education gets you. And they don't realize the impacts of what they're doing now, like how that will affect them down the line. Okay. Thank you. Give me a round of applause. For me, I would say to just like help boost their confidence levels. Say that. Say a little bit more about that, how we help support so it boosts confidence. That's, that's so critical, right? Because if folks is telling you what you can't do or who you not or all of that, right, that, that's the negative message that sends you in the wrong direction. But how do, we, how do we help with confidence? How do we help support? Just like letting them know how important uh, like grades are and stuff and doing your work, turning it in on time. Okay. All right. Let's give him his round of applause. All right, so when I think of, when I think of trying to convince somebody to like get better grades or something like that, the only way I can try to do that is through like a role model or like some of their peers that can kind of show them the right ropes because trying to tell somebody to do something ain't good and trying to force them to do something ain't good and just trying to alter their way of seeing ain't really good so they got to see somebody in the same grade or somebody who's successful through education to try to figure like get that realization that education is important or that this may be something that I need in the future. It's just that so much other stuff is glorified and there, so many people are focusing to get into the, the bag that they don't think education is good or they don't need education. So it's just that they need something to make them realize that education is important or that they need education in order to better themselves or that they need history to figure out what happened before so that they can see that it's happening now or certain things that they can just figure out like that. Okay, John, stay up. You're gonna, you're gonna get to lead us off on the last question. All right. Social media, bro. Tell us about it. How, how much of that is influence and how much of that is what's driving everybody? You know, help us understand what's happening with social media. All right, so you asked the wrong person because I don't have social media. <laughs> I, so, <laughs> So I don't, I don't know too much on that topic. So I, I would naturally say that I just hear people bumbling here and there and that social media probably is the main force behind uh, people. I'm not gonna say like people attention span, but like they can see so much stuff and they can like figure out stuff here and there. It is a useful tool. It's not something that is negative nor positive. It just depends on the way you use it. And from there on, we might have to figure out a way to show people how to use it positively or make them pay like pay attention to how much 
they're using it because a lot of people's uh, time on their phone is exponential. I don't know how someone had 24 hours on the phone starting on the bus and uh, it's it's out of, I don't know how. I got like two hours on my phone through a whole week and someone got like 140 hours in my seventh hour. I, who, I don't. Okay. You, go ahead, big fellas. Why don't you jump in, talk about social media, its impact. You come from the Caribbean. I don't know if social media is big there, and then you come here. So um, social media is, I think, is big everywhere when you once you have access to it. So in the Caribbean, where I'm from, um, they do use um, social media a lot there. But um, where we are, it's where we were, where I was, sorry. Um, people used to use it as a form of bullying. And that's one of the reasons why I never really had it and I never got into the habit of using it. So I never got exposed to it. And a part of that is also to my parents also because they helped me. Um, now I do have the apps just for communication wise in terms of texting my friends and stuff, but I don't use my social media in terms of just to relax that much. Um, I just use it for communication. First row, you want to talk about social media for us? It's on. It's on. Uh, I feel like social media can be good and bad in some ways because, like, it can be bad by, like, cyberbullying and stuff. But, like, it also can be good because you can, uh, like, get inspiration from it and see what you want to do in life. I mean, people you know on there faking that they this, that they that on social media, trying to pretend that they somebody that you know they not. Uh, I know a couple of people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cap. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like with social media, it can lead you to like good ways, but also bad ways, like with cyberbullying or those people just lying on the internet to get, like influence other people to do stuff like bad with their life. You have a uh, Instagram, Facebook? Yeah. Okay, TikTok? Yeah. Okay, all right. You're using it responsibly though, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, front row. Uh, I don't really use social media that much. I mean, I use it for communication, uh, like him. Um, but outside of that, not really. Uh, like you were saying, I know, like, I've seen a couple of people acting like who they're not on there. Um, and a lot of instigating on there. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, when it comes to, like, social media, I don't be on my phone that much unless unless I'm bored. I like okay. that. But like when people on social media, they like they use it for like, like just to show off. Like they'll say pull up and do this and do that. But they like when people actually show up, they're not like about that. But like, so like, um, especially like when people like, I don't know, but like they have flash guns and stuff all on there. Okay. And then like, yeah. So you all know that. You know, when you start looking for jobs and get ready for your scholarships, you know they're going to go to y'all pages and look and see what y'all posting, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. You get to finish it off on social media. Uh, I feel like social media sometimes can be a shield for certain people. Because, uh, you know, sometimes people want to act different and uh, just put on. They act like, well, how can I see it? Uh, you can go to a new town now. Somebody got you on social media. You could not be like that. But nobody know you. But when they get you on social media, you could act like you anybody. So I feel like that could just be, you know, a shield. Let's give our panel a round of applause. <laughs> Folks have done a phenomenal job today. I think we got a lot of information, right? Stuff that we can use and take and move forward with. We will, thanks to Maggie's help and others that are taking notes. So if you've got stuff you want to send to us as we capture this data and put it in a form that we can use it. Um, yeah, right? 
So the importance of hearing from our youth is something I don't want us to underestimate the importance of, right? Instead of us, we always do, we know what's best, or this is how we did it, this is the way it's supposed to go. The world is different. I thought I would had some bread and bag and cap and <laughs> all those things, right? So keeping up with the world is, is really important. So let's get, we got a couple of minutes left. Uh, I know we've got a couple information sharing for today. So um, we've got Justin in the back of the room. JR, you're gonna talk about the food summit? Yeah, no? So catch JR on your way back to Justin. Yeah, CH. Hi everyone, so uh, this coming Tuesday, we are hosting the second annual Feeding Champaign County Food Summit. Uh, some of you in the room here have, are already attending and coming. We are currently having a reservation form still open, so there's a few more slots to come if you're interested. It's an all-day event, 9 to 4, on Tuesday, April 16th, at the iHotel Conference Center. Um, lunch is provided. There's no cost to attend. Uh, we're going to be doing some, uh, uh, some, some short presentations. We have a couple keynote speaker presentations from some of our local Congress people. And then uh, we will be doing short uh, workshops. And in the afternoon, we're doing a kind of bigger community. It's called an offers and needs market, if you're familiar with that, um, and a seed exchange. So if you're interested uh, in that and you have not yet signed up, please let me know. And I will connect you with the right. Sounds good. Center. Justin. We're actively recruiting um, young adults, 18 to 24, who are um, uh, African-American, Latino, Asian, or woman and interested in the construction trades. So <clears throat> if um, you know someone 18 to 24 who is a non-white male and want, is interested in possibly a pre-apprenticeship to the construction trades, the Regional Planning Commission is partnering with the uh, East Central Illinois Building and Construction Trades Council to do a 10-week apprenticeship. There's a um, flyer back here, um, so go ahead and pick that up. The application window closes May 3rd, so now's the time to get people to apply. And it's a 10-week apprenticeship, and we can get you hopefully prepared to apply for a, a trade union apprenticeship. Thanks. Middle of the room. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I think a lot of you know me from being part of the Health Curve Center, but today I'm talking about the CHM Bible Theater, we do have youth art programs. So I heard people talk about, the kids talk about being shy and public speaking and all of that. We offer a lot of art programs. So we offer plays and mentorship programs, uh, creative programs, um, back to school events, singing, music, dance, art, all of that. And so upcoming is a summer work art shop, um, workshop coming up in August, I believe, and also registration in May. Uh, we do have some uh, flyers back there at the table for you all uh, who's interested in signing up to be a part of our plays and any type of other activities. So all of those artistic kids out there who want to be a part of our programs, make sure that you sign up. And Kevin, um, if you give, give your mic to Chief. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, hi, so I'm from Uniting Pride. I'm the Youth and Family Coordinator. My name's Anika. Um, so we have two big events coming up. We have, um, I heard someone talk about wanting to have dances and stuff. We have our queer prom coming up um, at the first weekend in May. Um, it is a super safe space for LGBTQ plus folks and their allied friends. You don't need anything to come. It's for young people ages 13 to 18. It's completely free. There's going to be food. There will be drag performers that can be your face. That's makeup. Um, there will be people that can dress you. We have formal clothes if you don't have any. And if you don't have supportive grown-ups to get you there, you just contact me and we can get you money or things that you need to get to prom. So that's something we have coming up that's very exciting. We also have for younger youth, um, we are doing a summer camp with the Stevens Family Y. And registration is open for that right now. It's called Camp Kaleidoscope. So it's... Um, um, there's two sessions for folks um, in second grade to to 13 years old, so going into ninth grade. So um, please register for that, and that also has scholarships, and no one will be turned away for lack of funds. 
All right, great. And there. Yep. Hello, Regional Planning Commission is beginning our community needs assessment that we do every three years. Um, there will be a community forum held at the city center building on Tuesday, April 23rd from 5 to 7 p.m. Um, you can email me, Jessica McCann, to register. I'll put a flyer at the back table. Feel free to take a photo. Um, registration closes this Friday the 12th. If you forget and email me a little later, I'll still work in. Thank right. you. And Chief, uh, we heard from your, but you want to talk about your candidates or your? Good afternoon, everyone. Tim Tyler, if the uh, new police officers from Cham Champaign was please stand. Yeah, as always, I would like to uh, give credit to our elected officials and our community members for investing in the Champaign Police Department. We are a uh, police agency that reflects our community, as you can see. All right. Welcome. So, um, Youth for Christ, Midnight Basketball, Dream, Urbana Park District, Don Moria Boys and Girls Club, Unit 4, Operation Hope. Youth Assessment Center and Urbana Neighborhood Connections. Um, what a phenomenal presentation from our students today, right? Can we give them a round of applause? Can we give them a real round of applause? Can we give them a real round of applause? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this, th these, this is our youth, right? This is the representation of who our youth are. And so we have to do as much as we can to uh, break through those stereotypes or wrong perceptions that are out there about who our students are. And so thank you to all of you. Thank you for what you're doing to uh, help yourself and move in positive directions, which helps our community grow. Uh, peace and love to all of you. See you next month here at the Co Community Coalition meeting, and thanks for coming today.